Good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to what Keisha has termed TNR, right? Tuesday Night Raw. Q&A with me, Dr. Andy. Um, I think I need to pull the hat back a little bit so you can see me a little bit. All right, my friends. I think the lighting's good. The phone is off. First, um, course of business. Can everybody hear me and see me? That would be awesome if you are here and you could let me know. And welcome back. If you've been here before live, welcome to everybody new. Welcome to those of you catching it on the replay. So my screen is like flashing green. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, I've not seen that before. Hello, Miss Clark and yes to both you hear me and see me. How's it getting better? Okay. So Tuesday night, raw, ask all your raw questions. <laughs> that pretty much means raw food, right? Raw species appropriate diet for our pets, but anything you got, I, I will do my best. If I don't know. I will tell you, um, if I need to go out and uh, find it, I will find it for us, but I'm looking forward to growing this community. And pop in any of your questions in the chat. Hello, Miss Emma's Education, also known as Ashley. Um, and 80 subscribers. It's growing. It's growing. How's it getting even better than that? So invite your friends. Invite your friends. And then we always send out a reminder. Not a re well, we do send out a reminder email if you're on an email list. And then we send out the link to the recorded version of this on Thursday. So you can always catch it on the replay. I always want to say rerun. Nobody uses rerun anymore. But, you know, th those are those days are long gone, right? Okay. So is anyone else seeing the green flashes on the screen? I'm just saying. It's a bit freaking me out. Um, and if not, great, and I'll try to ignore them. All right, I'm Dr. Andy. Okay, you are seeing them. That's bizarre. I was really hoping that was a no. I don't know what to do about that. <sighs> Says it's your transmission. Oh, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> my transmission? Like on my car? <laughs> I know the green. <laughs> The green is odd and the green is the transmission. Okay, I'm going to continue. It's just a little distracting, so I will try and ignore it. So everybody join me in the ignoring. All right, Dr. Andy here. I'm a doctor of chiropractic and a certified animal chiropractor for over 20 years. I have a clinical practice. My hands are on dogs almost every day and have been for 20 years. So everything I talk about, present, think I know, came from my clients, came from my own pack, um, and is meant to be an inspiration to go out and um, investigate further for yourself and for your own pack. So, okay, I think all of the intro is done. Um, if you are new, we would love for you to say hi, even if you're watching this on the replay, and tell us where you're watching from. That would be awesome. I guess that's kind of standard on YouTube to ask that of you. That would be awesome. Okay. Any pack updates out in the world before we jump into questions? Um, and I actually wanted to talk snuffling before we do questions. So I actually have a lot on my plate. So any pack updates out there? Your pack? Anybody else's pack? My pack? Um, okay. It's a big deal, folks. And I've kind of done this in the past. And I'm, I've decided, I made a decision to do this um, for real. <laughs> we went to one meal a day. So in the human fasting world, it's called OMAD. One meal a day, right? OMAD. So my pack went OMAD. And last week, we started a couple days, like four or five days of last week, we went to... Um, Diminishing breakfast and increasing dinner. So they're getting the same amount of food, folks. They didn't like cut out half their food. They get the same amount of food. Um, but now it's just one time a day. Okay. Uh, a, it was um, for the amount of time I spend doing meals. 
B, I've been fasting for a couple years now pretty regularly. I mean, vacations and, and a little bit here and there, but generally I, I fast. And I listen to a lot of the human side of keto and fasting and hormones and autophagy and all of that, that got me thinking about the animals. So I'm always thinking about the animals and I'm generally extrapolating, right? People to the dogs, the dogs to the people and, and seeing where we match and where we don't match. And I'm like, okay, so I generally don't eat one meal a day. I do on occasion. And some days I don't eat any meals. So I change it up like that. I'm not planning on doing this to them. That could change. But one meal a day would allow for a much bigger window of time for the body to do other things. If it's not overly concerned with all the digestion it needs to do, it has time to go and do that autophagy, which means self-eating, which means it's going to go out and scavenge up all of the sick dying cells that aren't any good. So I'm like, well, I do have this pretty senior dog. He'll be fifth. Actually, uh, he, he probably is 15. He was born sometime in March. 15 year old Jack Russell mix. So he's senior, right? Super senior. And I'm like, oh, can I do that to him? And then I have Torch, who's a year. So that's not a big deal, but he has a lot of digestive stuff going on. So I am really paying attention to the stress of this on them. Um, so far, we've been good, except Torch has now eaten a little more poop than he usually does. And he only does that very, very randomly. And I knew he had, he ate a turd this morning and he puked it up on my bed. That was pretty gross. It was some pretty gross puke there, Ashley. And the little poop came out. So does that mean, oh my God, I got to stop this? No, it's okay. Let's give this a little more time. Maybe there's some tweaking that needs to be done. Maybe there's um, snack time somewhat before that meal. I, I really am trying not to even give them treats. I really not trying to break their fast. It's not, I, you know, I'm not hardcore. And my mom lives with me. And so grandma's literally giving torch a bagel piece. And I'm like, of course. All the things, white, processed, gluten with toxic seed oils. I'm like, Argh. don't give him that. If you must give him something, don't give him that. But uh, I keep trying and it just, whoop. so this is also food that I don't eat. Um, this is the food she has in the house. So I will update next week how our OMAD is going. Um, so far, they're pretty active in the morning. Like they're like, woohoo. Part of it is they're waiting for their food. And they're like, hey, hey, hey what's going on? Um, and then B, what I've noticed, oh, I've noticed two things. And B, they eat their big meal. And then the evening is much quieter. They are pretty much out kind of hanging with us, digesting. So that's been nice. They're not as up and down and active in the evening. So that's kind of nice. In my senior, Mo, has been pooping a lot less because it almost seems like every time he went out, he had to like poop a little turd. And that seems to have diminished. So we'll keep an eye on it. The poop I have seen looked great and it's been a bigger amount. So maybe that's helping him in that way. It's too early to go, woohoo, you know, on all accounts, but Ah, it's been nice. I've actually been working out in the morning instead of putting food together. So there's my pack update. Um, and Keisha says, yeah, the humans often require more training than the dogs. Well, this is also really messed with my, uh, my routine, right? I've had to activate my brain. I mean, our mornings got into, um, you know, I get up, I do this, you know, and, and now I stopped all that and I had to change my routine. So it's actually really good for my brain too. Um, it's, it's generally good to mix up your routine. I heard somewhere along the way that even if you brush your teeth with your left, your non-dominant hand, that makes your brain fire and you have to think about things. So all of that stuff, mixing it up. So that's my pack update. Doesn't look like we have any other pack updates today. 
All right. <clears throat> Snuffle mats, my new favorite thing. Thank you, Miss Ashley. Uh, I've had them for a very long time. And, and there's the particulars are in the email that went out today on the Tuesday email from Animal Magic Care. So if you're on that email list, there's like the stuff's in there. But I wanted to add some of the commentary and the stories that I've been seeing with this snuffle mat. So I think, and Ashley, um, Ashley will correct me, but I think it came out for a big black lab client. She and this was a few weeks ago, and she's like, "Don't you have a snuffle mat?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, I have a snuffle mat. You gifted it to me. It's in the dog closet somewhere." I've known about them. They're super cute. I've looked at them on Amazon. Ashley has made me some. I have a bigger one and a medium and a small. And I think they got a little dusty in the closet. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's fun. I really was missing the boat on what it could do for my clients and then my own pack. So she shoves all the cookies in into this square of fleece, basically a little tied fleece pieces, and you hide the cookies down in it. Um, and he stuck his head in it, and he just starts snuffling around. And she wasn't, like, trying to manage him with cookies. He was letting me do whatever I wanted adjustment-wise. And he really didn't mind the adjustments. He was just a very busy guy. Um, it wasn't like we were managing, oh, my God, I hate the adjustments kind of thing. And he's in there and he's snuffling and then he like, he'd lift and I'm watching this going, well, that's cool. That makes my job easier. I like that part. We could do more of that. And he would come up on the mat and he'd be like, <sighs> he like literally had to take a break. Like he had been running and I'm like, oh my gosh. And Ashley's like, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm not that bright of a chiropractor. Um, uh, I knew when you when dogs use their nose, it activated both sides of the brain, which then activated the entire neurological system to the rear end. And so for our senior guys where the rear end becomes a lot more disconnected from the front end, um, neurologically speaking, I would give the tool of just throwing cookies on the floor and having this on a carpeted area and have the seizure sniff that out. This kind of takes it a next level, get a snuffle mat for your seniors, if fill it up with cookies, get them on a carpeted floor and have them snuffle out of the mat. It's actually more intense and more activating of the nervous system um, because about one third of the dog's brain is dedicated to their nose, their olfactory senses. Um, and that's huge. Essentially, they use their nose like we use our eyes. That's how important it is. And snuffling like that actually looking for the cookies. And we would literally have to turn our backs in the office and put all, because they want to watch and see where they go. It's really cute. And then they shove them all in there and then we set them down and they go back to snuffling. So I haven't had any reports back on animals that have been seeing me for a while. If they snuffle and then go home after snuffling an adjustment, if they're a lot more tired or not, I would think they would be. Uh, so like 15 minutes of that, it's like one hour walk. So especially in Colorado or places where it's cold and wintry on days, now you have another activity. And I know I've sent out emails on games. Um, I've rolled up cookies in a towel, like stuff to activate their nose. Um, it, it activates their brain, makes them tired. So everybody that and, and I've struck I've struggled with this over the years. I don't have a lot of time. I'm very busy with clients, long hours, getting everything done. There's a lot of admin and all that. And then I have five dogs now from the ages of 15 to one. So exercising them has always been a challenge. Like my poodle, honest to God, would love to walk for about three, four miles a day. They don't have the time. My Doberman doesn't need that. Um, torch with his chondrodysplastic legs, because that's what he is. I mean, that's man-made, no leg, little dachshund thing with the long back. Shouldn't be doing that much. Mo can't with three legs. Molly Brown probably could, but she doesn't really need to. That's a lot of impact. She's six pounds. So it's like balancing the physical. And I've been doing more and more with games. I will be doing more and more with the snuffle mat. Like, and, tr and people forget, like, oh, we walk every single day, five miles a day. I'm like, well, maybe you actually need a break from that and activate the brain. 
there's two things. There's the physical and there's the mental. And a lot of times we forget the mental. My my kid down in Texas, he's a um, a guide, a manager at a ranch, a bow hunting ranch. And he has a Malinois and that's a long story. And really it, it, it's a breed of magnitude, right? And that dog is with him. He rides in the buggy. He runs and he's out in the, you know, on the land for acres and acres and he's busy all day, but we still, lately I've been like talking with him, well, you still need to activate his brain. Um, and he's, I think he, maybe I'll send a snuffle mat down to Texas. I don't know how well that'll go with the melon well. <laughs> You might just rip the whole thing up, but we also still need to get the mental side of it. Like, what are you doing for dog training, like sitting and downing and, and oh, we know. I'm like, no, I know he's out there running and thank goodness he has that outlet, like, right? But we also need to activate the brain. Um, what else? Oh, I had little, um, little, another little wiener and a little opal. And she, she went down in the rear we're doing chiropractic acupuncture. She's coming back. She did med. She's doing great. She walked in this last appointment. Awesome. And I pull out the snuffle mat and she just goes to town. Like she's, and I look at mom, I'm like, probably should have thought of this so many weeks ago. Cause she ate, I believe ate through three beautiful cannabis kennels. Cause she was so bored in her kennel because she was, um, she couldn't get out of her kennel because we didn't want her re-injuring or injuring herself even further with those back legs not working. And I'm like, ooh, sorry about that. But you might want to get a, a snuffle mat now. We might have saved the crates, right? We might have saved the kennels. Uh, so dogs that, we talked about the seniors doing it, but dogs that, post-surgical dogs, surgicals, uh, not, yes, post-surgical. Opal was not post-surgical, but she was injured, right? She was on um, crate rest. And so it gives them something to do. Uh, and so she did have a lot of chewing things, but she went through those kennels. I'm like, oops, sorry, mom. Didn't think about that. Um, but be beyond the black, like today, I actually would be so proud of me. I think I put down the snuffle bat three times. Um, my little new Frenchie client, she was not eating any treats. She was not interested in anything, but um, the, uh, oh, the lab, the golden, the golden retriever. He was delightful. The last time he came in, he's like, he was like, I ain't going in that room. Mm -mm. I ain't getting on that table. Mm -mm. No, I, I know I'm not, you're not touching me. He was all very sweet about it, but he was very apprehensive. And this was his second visit and he came in very nicely and he actually put front feet on, on the table. And then I went and got the snuffle mat and he's watching me and I'm putting all the cookies in it. And then all feet ended up on the table and I set down the snuffle mat and he's like whoop, face in there. He didn't, and he like, whatever. And then he laid down and he's still snuffling and I give pet parents the cup and they refill. And so he's snuffling about that 15, 20 minutes. Um, while I'm working on him and he would come up and same thing. <sighs> and he'd just take a break and he'd look at me in the eyes and he'd look at mom and then he'd go back and snuffle. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, and actually when we were done, he didn't want to get up. He was like spent. I'm like, well, he may be a little extra tired um, because we just did this. Um, and so when I tell pet parents after they're chiropractic, usually the initial, maybe the initial one, two, three visits. And then after that, you can play it by ear. I tell them no exercise. So if we get to snuffle while we get adjusted, that may make the whole day even easier. For, especially this guy, he was only four. And so he's younger. And so they tend to like take a nap and then I, I want to go do something. And, and previously, I'd recommend chewing on bones. And that's still a great idea. You know, chew on a bully stick, um, chew on a bone instead of being active after an adjustment. But now we could hopefully maybe the snuffle mat will do that or if they want to snuffle at home, if they're not interested in snuffling with me. So that, let's see, Ashley's got lots to add because she's brilliant. Um, yeah, she, um, Emma's education says if she remembers correctly, she read that somewhere animal, animals, humans 
<laughs> can see one mile away. Dogs can smell five miles away. Uh, yeah, sometimes running or walking a dog doesn't tire them out. Just helps them run and walk longer. And that is also Crosby's story. Um, in the summer when I actually am much better at walking and I get out sometimes morning and night and we do more, he just ends up with more stamina. And I have yet to wear that dog out. And we were talking about him last week with the towels. Like I was really hoping he would be smarter about finding the cookies. And then Ashley was in on Saturday and we, I rolled up the towel and laid it down and he did much better. Um, he wasn't great. And I think I was making the roll too hard. I put them all in the middle, folded it in half and then rolled it up. And Ashley's like, well, just sprinkle them throughout the towel and roll that up. So he was getting reinforcement as he moved the towel. So part of that was I was making it a little too difficult. Um, but even by the time that towel went down again, and that was maybe... I don't know, third, fourth, fifth time, somewhere in there that I did that with him, he was better at it. And then I gave him the snuffle mat and he was better at that. Because the first time we did the snuffle mat, he just like tried to rip apart the snuffle mat. And so now he's, so it does take a little bit of training on with some animals. And so my target is to do that more with him and maybe we can get him a little more um, exhausted. <laughs> Uh, it, it just in a daily routine. Uh, it was, it was funny yesterday. The pictures in the email were all taken yesterday. So everybody got the snuffle before they got their one meal. And I don't think I've ever had Molly Brown snuffle before a little six pounder. And I used the big, the big, um, mat that I have, but I only put the cookies kind of in the middle. Oh my goodness, didn't need to show her how to do that. She was like, fuh, 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 fuh. and like winner, winner, chicken dinner. She got them all out of it. Everybody else missed one or two. She got them all. Um, so some are like, oh, this is what you do here. Duh. And so what, we're, that's my target is to do more snuffling with clients, um, making my job easier because they're going to be distracted with that. Along with, I do wonder if adjusting the nervous system and activating it, if we get a more impactful adjustment. I have no idea. No idea. I'm just throwing that out into the world. Just a thought. Uh, and Ashley says she got an email today that snuffle mat supplies are being shipped. Ooh. Yeah, our supply chain issues. We are low and um, I kind of stole the orange mat too because the first two dogs got the mat so gooey with their snuffles that I couldn't keep using it. I had to try. So we're, we're, we, we really need to fix up our chain supply issues. So I talked about Crosby clients, my thoughts on snuffling, any questions, but check out Amazon, check out other websites, see what you like. Um, you can also contact Ashley. We'll <laughs> Ashley's like, oh God, I'm going to be like dreaming of slicing up fleece, right? You can contact Ashley. Maybe, she, maybe she'll be kind enough to make you one. Um, I don't know. So that's it. That's snuffling. So I learned a lot. I got over my um, stomminess when it came to that silly little snuffle mat and really seeing how impactful and how much it can contribute to your animals. So, <sighs> okay. Ashley says she's here for all the snuffle mat needs. So how's it getting better? Okay. Whew. Enough of me babbling today. Any questions out there in the raw world? I actually um, have a heads up that Ashley has some questions for me. So we'll see. <clears throat> okay. So she texted you. My, do you want me just to Read them from the text. I can do that. Okay. I can do that. I didn't know what your plan was. Yeah, so I got a preview of questions here. It is long. Yes. Very long. Okay. 
So Ashley's on, ask, asking on behalf of a friend. Um, so Dory has a golden, um, great peer mix named Bunny. She is 75 pounds and should be considerably less. Dory has been complaining for a while of the shedding, con consistent grooming, and that Bunny occasionally eats her own poop. Ashley has been telling Dory to change Bunny's food and she's finally considering it. Bunny is currently eating Rachel Ray. Um, which Rachel Ray should be ashamed of her dog food. Okay, that's my com side commentary. And yes, I realize Rachel Ray has no idea that maybe she even sells dog food. <laughs> I, I, I'm aware of this. And um, she should be ashamed. Anyway, Dory is looking for options on better food. May not be willing to go full raw just yet, but understands that her dog is currently eating crap food. A few years back, Dory had an older dog and listened when Ashley suggested they change his food. They went to a wet food. Um, she doesn't remember what, but this came up today in conversation because Dory admitted that changing the food made a huge difference in the previous dog within a week. People are funny. People, we are so funny. Why she went back to kibble with the new dog, you know, we don't know. Conditioning. My guess is because Bunny is so much bigger. And we're not talking a Golden Retriever Great Pure Mix. So it's a pretty big dog. Um, and good food costs more. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I have this. So what do we want to tell Dory? <laughs> so while speaking with Dory, another coworker started asking questions. Jane was asking questions about her two dogs. One is 60, one is 40 pounds. Um, Jane works a lot, doesn't have a big freezer, which is a consideration when we're talking going frozen raw. Um, it, it has to be a consideration in, in the, the whole thing. Um, one of the dogs is resource guarding the kibble. Why they get to eat together is beyond me. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, Dog's currently eating one of the Costco, Costco brand of dog food. Um, what suggestions do you have for her to improve her dog's diet? So is that the same question for both of them? Like, we want to keep eating Rachel Ray, but make it better. We want to keep eating Costco, but make it better. Uh, mm, right? Dog snob. Okay. It doesn't, Dory is more willing to go raw. Okay, so she's got some room and, okay, but wants options. What does that mean, wants options? Um, I have said this before and I will say it again and I will keep saying it. If you want healthier dogs that behave better, the biggest bang for your buck is changing to diet to a raw species appropriate diet. That is frozen raw. I don't know what that means options. Okay. So we want to cheat. Right? Um, go, you know what? I don't, I'm, I'm going to try not to get stuck on options. Going to a frozen raw food, species appropriate diet, Dee Dee would argue with me, but I'm going to say it, is a thing. You have to decide. You have to commit. You have to look at freezer space. You have to look at time. This is going to require more time than dumping a cup full of Skittles in a bowl every morning. Okay. And for those of you that free feed, that's, you know, or every three days when you throw some food in a bowl. Um, it doesn't necessarily take that much time more, but it's going to take more time. You are going to have to think about what meat needs to be defrosted and you're going to have to do it. Okay. And, and you can talk about it till the cows come home. 
Um, to go from Rachel Ray to frozen raw food diet is a huge leap of magnitude. Um, and that some people can do it. I had one client that she was feeding Imes, dry kibble, and she's like, my dog has been sore. We've been doing this for a year. It's not changing. What? And she asked me, what do I do? And I go, you go to rawdogfoodandcompany.com. You listen to the podcast and you change their diet and you go raw. And that is what she did because she had decided she had enough of this. Um, so do you want to do baby steps? Do you want to go from Rachel Ray to a dehydrated raw, like an Honest Kitchen, a Grandma's Lucy's? Um, God, what else is out there? There's a bunch out there where you add warm water and you and you let it congeal. I call it green slaw. That makes me happier because the moisture level goes up. The carbohydrate level sure as shit does not go down because it's all generally a potato base. Okay, so do you want to just get the moisture changed? Do you want to go on this longer journey? That's fine. My journey was very long from, I think I was feeding Jack's Canada at the time to we went to Honest Kitchen and then Honest Kitchen, we added a lot of cooked meat to it. And then we added um, some raw organs to that. And then, you know, and it was finding the resources. Because at the time, and still to this day, I can't feed all the animals that I have from retail raw. And as of late, that retail raw is so full of carbohydrates and vegetables and plants and resprayed vitamins and this and that, that I don't think it, it's a, a, a great benefit. It's a good benefit. It's not a great benefit. Plus, you're going to be paying a lot of money for it. And it's still highly, highly processed. So do uh, what options do you want to do? Do you want to start? Um, do you want to change the kibble? Do you want to get off of Rachel Ray and maybe go to Nature's Logic? I They're the only ones that I am in this 10 seconds aware of that do not respray the synthetic vitamins back on the kibble. Hell, that could have changed since the last time I looked them up. There could be other brands that do that. Um, do you want to just improve the kibble and soak it for 12 hours? So you put the food in in the morning, soak it for 12 hours, feed that dinner, repeat for breakfast. Okay. Do you want to take that to one meal a day and just have it soaked so it's just mush? Got to increase the moisture. I mean, it's still processed to high noon. Like, it's still processed. We're still spiking our insulin with it. We're, we're still stressing the body with the carbohydrate load that we're digesting if you stay on kibble. But baby step, soak it. Go down to one meal a day. Um, it, nature's logic is the only one that I am aware of that doesn't respray the synthetic vitamins on after it's processed. And maybe that's only certain parts of it. Now I, you'd have to check on them. Uh, Origin is probably still a really good one. Although they use so many different proteins that if you do, if you are having some sensitivities, it's hard to figure out. So, you know, and they used to be made in Canada. They are no longer made in Canada. I'm trying to think who owns. You also want to look for a company that owns that that owns their factory. Not necessarily owns it, but it's the only thing that goes through that factory. And so they have better better quality control. Um, I think From still owns their own factory. Like all the other brands will run their food through Purina or they'll run their through food through this factory. And so, you know, maybe ingredients get mixed or maybe this machine doesn't get, you know, like the quality control changes a little bit. 
So that's the other thing you can look for in foods is where is it processed? And is it in a factory that that company owns and has control over? So that helps. Um, pretty much people, it's, you know, they do, they look me right in the eye and, um, you know, they're on from, they're on a really good kibble. I'm like, mm -hmm. they're like, and then they start to try and convince me. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I am a snob. Um, I do think all kibble is crap and really you need to do this. If you want the biggest bang for your buck health wise for your dog. There's no guarantees in life, but the biggest bang for your buck is changing the diet. Um, options, options. Do you, and I, if you're gonna try some off the shelf retail, um, go with frozen raw. I think dehydrated raw is great for treats. End of discussion. Like, it's so processed and it's reformed, right? So it's compressed and crumbled and reformed. And I don't think we do a great job um, rehydrating it. Again, 12 hours, people, not two minutes. <laughs> and yes, your dogs lick up the water that they're sitting in, but that's not the same as moisture in the food. It does not behave the same in the body. And we live in Colorado. We live in a, a dry um, environment. This may not correlate across the country, right? So I mean, you may live in damper environments, but here in Colorado, it's super dry and, and kibble is super dry. And so your kidneys get super dry and your kidneys have basically your life energy in them. And when the kidneys go, that's the end. And so how many dogs have kidney um, failure and, and kidney disease and kidney issues, kibble fed. And then even if you go to the dehydrated raw, um, I, I don't think we hydrate it well enough. It's over-processed at this point that I like dehydrated raw for treats only. I don't think it should be fed as a food. Plus it's so damn expensive. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, Jane's, I, I don't know if I can, I don't know if that helps Dory. I don't know if Dory just needs to make the commitment. Yes, dehydrated raw is more expensive. Yeah. Oh, I think so. At least everybody tells me that. Um, like I said, I buy it for treats. I, I don't plan on feeding what's on the bag. So, um, you don't know, I think Corey, Dory just needs to decide what she wants to do. And I can say the shedding will be less. It will be less. You have canned is super expensive. You actually feed what they recommend on the canned. Big dogs, it's great to get some moisture. Um, kind of like what you did with her old dog. I like some old dogs that have been eating poor kibble. Getting them to go raw, it's, it, it can be almost mean. I think it can be just too much depending on their age and their health status. But going to a canned for a smaller dog, especially the smaller dogs with the bad teeth, doing canned, it gets a little more expensive, but it's doable. The moisture goes up. Um, in canned, you're talking 90% meat product. Okay, we can argue where that meat comes from, but <laughs> depending on the company, but at least you're at 90% meat. Yes, there's probably other fillers. I mean, it's ridiculous what's actually in canned, but, but at least we've gone up in moisture level. We've gone up in the meat content. And so that's a lot of like super senior dogs. That is my recommendation. Little ones because canned is so expensive. Big, I go back to soak the kibble until it's mush and maybe add some can to that. If you just think it, that going raw is just going to be too expensive. And to people, I say, put it pen to paper. Go to raw dog food and co.com. Figure out what your dog's going to eat. Figure out a flavor you want to buy. Put it pen to paper. Compare it to what you're spending in your kibble in the canned 
in the supplements, in the treats, in your vet care. Because going raw over here generally reduces how much medication and visits to the vet you will need to do, generally speaking. Okay. So pen to paper people, we assume that raw is more expensive. And on probably a bowl to bowl basis, absolutely. Um, and But that's my choice to do that for my animals. My vet care, minimal, minimal. I have hardly anything in that column. Uh, and so does it balance out? Probably. It's been so long since I've fed kibble and there's not anything that's in my world. So comparing that's hard at this point for myself. But you know, people that are doing it, write down all the treats you buy, all the supplements you buy. You may not need all those supplements. A lot of times we're like, just switch the food. Two weeks, just the food, see where the dog lands, and then we can reevaluate. Do we need joint support? Do we need this digestive whatever? Do we need something over here? Unfortunately, folks, our food supply is so poor. For us, for our animals, raw to kibble, like the, the starting materials, the soil is so depleted that we most likely are going to have to supplement something. Um, I hate to say it, but that's kind of the state of where we are. Um, okay. Oh, less shedding. Yes. Less groomer expenses, possibly. All right. Maybe we don't go in. Maybe we don't smell so bad because I'm sorry, most golden retrievers have a smell to them. Um, and those are golden retrievers that are kibble fed. Maybe we don't need to go to the groomer so much. Pen to paper. Really take a look at what you want to change, but the shedding will go down. Um, I don't know if she has a smell or not. I don't want to offend Dory and her dog. Um, but it's possible knowing that breed and those breeds, that hair, you know, is, is she kind of yeasty? It, you know, what, what else are you noticing with her coat that could clear up almost instantaneously as soon as you get off that, that Rachel Ray pretend food? Um, okay, Miss Jane, who also sounds like she wants options. Um, kibble, Costco kibble, what, and she has no freezer space. Okay. That's a deal. That's a big deal. Um, we need a place to put, especially for a hundred pounds a dog. Okay. She's got a 40 pounder and a 60 pounder. Um, Rod Dog Food and Company comes in two or five pound chubs. We need to put those somewhere. Uh, even like the bags of patties, frozen raw on the shelf, we need to put those somewhere. So again, get to soaking the kibble. Let's till it is mush. Um, it sounds like the two dogs need to eat away from each other and they need to be maybe just fed meals. I don't know if they're free fed or not. I don't know what's going on in the household, but they need to be fed meals. Uh, and if they're not eating, <laughs> um, you pick it up. You might be overfeeding your dogs. I might be getting a little off track on that and maybe reading into the question a little bit. My apologies if I am. But soak it. Soak it for 12 hours. We want mush. Okay. Um, grab some canned food. Mix, you know, half a can in each bowl or so. Um, to get some more meat and more more moisture in there. Now, I did come across a study, and I, I can't find it again, and I believe they talked about it in one of my um, courses with Standard Process, that if you insist on feeding kibble, that all the dogs in the study did better. Now, if that was blood work or, or what they tested, I don't know, was adding cooked vegetables, and cooked meat on top of the kibble. Now, the purists are going to lose their minds, right? We can't mix kibble. And, you don't mix kibble and raw, okay? Kibble raises the pH of the stomach. So digestion becomes compromised. 
because of the amount of carbohydrates in the kibble. Okay. So I'm going to get myself in trouble. So if you insist on doing one meal raw, frozen raw, and one meal kibble, because it supposedly saves you money, pen to paper, people, pen to paper. I don't know if that's actually true, especially when you start mixing them. Okay. That kibble meal is going to raise the pH. So when you feed the raw meal, the pH is not going to be low enough to digest the raw properly. So you don't, you really don't want to put kibble and raw together. That's really hard on the digestive system. It's really hard. You're not going to properly digest the raw at the, the, the low acid level of the pH, which should be around a one, if not less than a one. Okay. Seven is neutral. 14 is very basic. One is acidic. Okay. So when I say raise it, when you eat kibble, your, your pH in that stomach is going to be a two, a two and a half. And so when you put the raw in, that raw is not going to completely digest. And then you could have issues because you were not killing everything that's in that raw. You're not digesting all of it properly and it's not being utilized properly by the body. So if you do one meal and one meal, it's better than together. Don't ever put them together. New thought is you don't even do half and half. Like you just, that pH is just not going to be where you want it to digest that raw properly. Okay. So now you just told me to put vegetables and meat on top of it. I'm talking cooked. Okay. So um, all the bacteria and all of that's going to be already killed. So we're not going to have to worry about the acid in the stomach handling that. Like my raw fed dogs, I don't even know what their acid is like, right? They can digest that. They can digest small bones. Obviously, Torch can't digest a piece of poop, but, you know, we're working on things. And he has some digestive issues. So, okay, so it's all it's all relative. But they only get the meat and they only get raw with raw. And so they're, they're very acidic pH in their stomach. And that handles all the bacteria and everything that could be in it. That's why it's not a problem to feed your dog a raw species appropriate diet. But when you start mixing it with kibble, so cooked meat, okay, it's going to be less nutritious, but it's going to be better than the processed crap underneath it. So whenever you make hamburger for tacos, pull out some plain ground beef before you put the spices in. Um, salmon ground turkey, ground chicken, some chicken, with you know, um, everything before the sauces, no onions, right? Vegetables, make some extra broccoli, make some extra cauliflower, cooked, not raw. Um, raw vegetables are very hard to digest for dogs, and we don't want to tax the system any more than the kibble already is. But that study showed that adding that, I think it was even three days a week, really helped nutrition-wise and health-wise for the animals. So if we just got really good at including them in our meals and adding cooked meat or even cooking beef specifically or turkey for them specifically um, and adding it to their kibble, you know, now pay attention. Your particular dog may not be able to digest those two things together. This isn't like across the board. This should work, right? Uh, drain the fat. Uh, because kibble fed dogs cannot handle a high fat load, their digestive system is already so taxed from the carbohydrate and the process load of the kibble that adding fat stresses the entire system. So definitely drain all that off of the meat. Okay. So those are some, maybe some options for Jane. Again, we could talk about going to the green slop of dehydrated raw and adding even meat to that. Again, the moisture level goes up. If we're willing to get rid of the kibble and go to a dehydrated raw, this doesn't lower the carbohydrate level. It's a mildly less processed. I do think it's somewhat of an improvement. And then if we add more cooked meat, I did this in the past. That's That was one of my steps in my journey was Honest Kitchen with added cooked meat. We did a lot of cooked turkey. Um, and we added it to that. We did a lot of that. We did all right. It was one of our steps. 
Um, the moisture level went up, the processing goes down a little bit, uh, and we add a little bit more protein. So um, some options there. Um, yes, you, absolutely. You can soak um, it in broth, bone broth, you, or yeah, bone broth, chicken, beef, turkey, but it, like you said, no onion. So that has to be a pet bone broth or make it yourself. And you can use garlic. You can't use onion. Um, all the people bone broths have onion in it. I'm just telling you this. You don't have to go read them. All of the human bone broths, which are a fraction of the cost and easier to get, let me tell you, I know this, have onion in it. An onion can compromise the kidneys. And we don't want to do that. Um, all right. So Ashley did do the math for Dory. Came out to about $8 a day. Yeah. That's probably about right. You know. And we could even, what weight do we want Dory's dog at? And we can feed to that weight. And that might drop that a little bit. Um, if Jane chooses that, you're probably looking for a 100-pound dog. Um, $10 a day is going to go up a little bit. And so $10 a day, 30 days a month is approximately $300, give or take. Right? I have no idea what kibble costs. <laughs> I have no idea. I've, I can't even like slowly, you know, kind of compare that in my brain. Um, she's Ashley's confident that Addie would be on some rough seizure meds if she did not come to yep to your house. Um, they have reduced the seizures a lot with diet and CBD. I always say my my Doberman would be dead at this point. Um, he was not the best bred dog, um, and he's had some quirky personality issues. Um, he's been minimally vaccinated, raw fed, no heartworm, no anything else. And we're doing okay. He is his best self and he has no hair from his shoulders to his butt. And we have just implemented CBD to keep his mental a little more um, balanced. And he's seven. So yeah, that's his best self. Right. So, but I know he'd be dead if he was kibble fed and fully vaccinated and on all the things because he would probably be vicious and they probably would have had to put him down. Um, just my point of view, uh, knowing him. Uh, yeah. Some dogs don't like the kibble soaked in water. That's why you add a little can. So what? Oh, yeah. And for all of you that are going to argue with me that they need the kibble for their teeth. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. It's an old wives tale. And I'm going to tell you why. And then I'm going to say goodbye. Because <laughs> we're coming up on our hour. But digestive enzymes in our mouth. When we put um, potatoes in our mouth and you hold them there, they start to liquefy. We have a digestive enzyme called amylase in our mouth that digests carbohydrates. Dogs do not have amylase in their mouths. Okay, so when that kibble goes in their mouth, and actually the ones that chew it and get it stuck on their teeth, it stays stuck on their teeth because the body, their bodies don't have the amylase to break it down. So actually, kibble contributes to your dental disease. You actually should be grateful if your dog just swallows their food and doesn't get it stuck all over their teeth. Which, if they need the kibble and the crunch for their teeth, if they're swallowing it, what? Right? Kibble is not required for the teeth. If anything, it contributes to dental disease. Your dog has amylase in their digestive enzyme to digest the carbohydrates down there. They don't have it in their mouth. So that stuff that's stuck on their teeth is stuck on their teeth. Okay. Whew. Okay. I wish that would die. And probably at least once or twice a month, my vet said, your vet is wrong on that one. Okay. Um, yeah, some dogs don't like it soaked in kibble. Um, you know, add some cans, see what you can do. It's true. Some don't like it. Some don't care. Uh, yes, it is a plug why you should own a chihuahua. Small dogs are easy to feed. 
expensive food. Um, my husband and I have talked about it. No more big dogs. That's one of the reasons. Um, another reason, I like the little things. You just pick them up and put them in a box if you need to. <laughs> I just I just want easy. Okay, they're louder. But I, 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 I'm really turning into a very much of a small dog person. Um, so, yes. Yes. Kibble for teeth would be like dentist telling us to eat Captain Crunch. Or would I remember little toddlers that were getting those little fruit chews and then they were sticking on their teeth and rotting out their teeth? That's kind of what I think about kibble. I mean, kibble's crunchy, but so Captain Crunch makes more sense. But yeah, anything that sits on there is going to rot out the teeth. Um, the power of marketing psychology. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope that hope helps Dory and Jane to decide something. I they, I that may be like my my not with them per se that don't don't have them take, but I think people need to decide, and then they really need to know why they decide, and stick with it. A little stick to itness, and it's hard. That's why I'm here. That, that I, I have your back because a lot of vets don't have your back. Uh, a lot of your friends don't have your back. Um, and it, and sometimes you feel pretty lonely out there doing it, being different and, and choosing more for your animals. And so that's why I'm here. I have your back. So choose it and walk the walk. Um, I don't think anyone's ever regretted it. People have changed their minds. That got too expensive or that's too much work or that, and that, and that. But they've always said, oh, my animal was much better on it. Don't understand it, but I've heard it. Um, yeah, we went wrong and never go back. Never go back. Yeah, I feed uh, how many pounds? A dog, a cat? 16. I'm going to do this really quick and then I'm going to say goodbye. 16, 27, 33, 48. So 50, 80, 130. So I feed about 160, 165 pounds of um, animal raw every month. And I know I one of my clients has three Great Danes, plus her cats. That's commitment. That is for supporting our animals to be their best selves. Um, and I think that's where you start with diet. All right. Phew! My friends. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight on this Tuesday Night Raw. I will be back next week, um, whatever that is, what, March 21st, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time here on YouTube on Dr. Andy's World channel. Invite your friends. Um, bring your questions. Uh, let's build this community. Let's get the support out there so, you, so people that know in their hearts this is what's going to contribute the most to our animals. Have somewhere to go. And I know there's other places and there needs to be more places of support and community. So you're not out there doing this alone and being different all alone. Right. And, you know, you, you have people that have your back when you're talking to your vet and others about it. So my friends, thank you for being here now and in the future. And until we meet again, how much fun can you have with your animals? Bye-bye.